the most distant human-made object, NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, is an interstellar space, the space between the stars. Humans have perpetually been curious about the universe above and below them. The insatiable need to learn more is one of humanity's greatest virtues, and it will continue to play a major role in shaping the species. As a result of people's curiosity, we now know more about the universe than ever before. It's true that our understanding of the cosmos is limited, but that hasn't stopped humanity from wanting to learn more about its biggest mysteries. Missions like Voyager, launched by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, have helped us learn more about the universe. Without a fortunate confluence of events, two of the most spectacular spacecrafts ever launched might never have gotten off the ground. In this scenario, the four largest planets in our solar system stood in for the stars. Both probes have been put out in space for 45 years and are still on their way. Some scientists are even younger than the Voyager spacecraft, and they're actively using the data it has collected to answer questions about the universe beyond our solar system. And just recently, Voyager 1 stumbled upon an oddity. What exactly is this new finding? Where do the probes stand now? What difficulties might these spaceships encounter in the not-too-distant future? All of this will be revealed in today's video. Spending 45 years traveling through the solar system takes its toll on a spaceship. The Voyager 1 spacecraft, which was launched by NASA in 1977, has traveled further than ever before. It entered a region of space known as interstellar space in 2012 and is currently 14.5 billion miles or 23.3 billion kilometers from home. And while Voyager 1 is still fully functional, mission experts have discovered that it appears to be disoriented as to its location in space without entering a safe mode or otherwise ringing an alarm. A mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission, said Suzanne Dodd, project manager for Voyager 1 and its twin, Voyager 2, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what the mission planners anticipated. Dodd added, We are also in interstellar space, a high-radiation environment that no spacecraft have flown in before. The problem lies with Voyager 1's AACS, the system responsible for maintaining the correct orientation of the spacecraft and antenna. The spacecraft is receiving commands, carrying them out, and transmitting science data to Earth with the same signal strength as normal. Therefore, the AACS appears to be functioning normally. However, the AACS is transmitting useless telemetry data to the spacecraft operators. A timeline for the problem's onset and duration is not provided in the NASA announcement. The agency has stated that Voyager crew members would keep digging into the problem and trying to find out a solution or workaround. This is a tedious operation because it now takes a signal from Earth 20 hours and 33 minutes to reach Voyager 1. Similarly, obtaining a response from the spacecraft takes the same amount of time. NASA has reported no issues with the Voyager 2 spacecraft, its twin that was also launched in 1977. To extend the lifespan of the twin spacecraft past their projected retirement in 2025, the mission team has disabled some systems in an effort to conserve power. Scientists believe that the edge of the sun's continuous flow of particles and its magnetic field marks the start of interstellar space. In 2018, Voyager 2 became the first spacecraft ever to enter interstellar space, according to NASA. In those moments, the spacecraft was farther than 17.7 billion kilometers from the sun. Until now, the only spacecraft to venture into interstellar space were the two Voyagers. Two explorers have investigated the relationship between the solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles emitted by the sun, and the interstellar medium. They've also shed light on the heliosphere, a bubble of plasma that surrounds our solar system by providing data on its composition and dynamics. The heliosphere is a region of space around the sun that is formed by the solar wind and is subject to constant transformation by the forces of interstellar space. The heliopause marks the boundary between our solar system and the interstellar medium beyond it. Scientists have combined Voyager observations with data from newer missions to get a more complete picture of our sun and how the heliosphere interacts with interstellar space, NASA said. 
Scientists said last year that Voyager 1 had picked up a humming noise that they believe is related to waves seen in tiny amounts of gas located in the nearly empty reaches of interstellar space. At NASA's headquarters in Washington, D.C., Nicola Fox oversees the organization's heliophysics research. She made this claim in a statement praising the Voyagers for their contribution to our understanding of the Sun and its role in shaping the solar system. The Voyager missions have been essential in supplying this knowledge and have helped improve our understanding of the Sun and its influence in ways no other spacecraft can. Over the previous 45 years, Fox said, the thermoelectric power system that propels each Voyager is fueled by plutonium. Since the plutonium's decay reduces its heat output, the Voyager's power supply is dwindling. NASA said the crew disabled all unnecessary devices, including several that were previously considered essential. Among these are heaters that keep instruments from shutting down in the freezing space environment. The five instruments have had their heaters switched off since 2019, but the space agency says they are still functioning. Engineers at NASA are still baffled by the Voyager's ability to function in temperatures so much lower than their original specifications. The further away from Earth Voyager 1 travels, the more likely it is that strange things will start to happen to the spaceship. Spacecraft's AACS, or Attitude Articulation and Control System, is malfunctioning at the moment. The probe's high-gain antenna, which communicates with Earth, is pointed by this mechanism, which also controls the probe's orientation in space. According to the engineers, the AACS is functioning normally. NASA says the data it's sending back doesn't do a good job of describing the system's behavior. Data may appear to be arbitrarily produced or does not reflect any possible state the AACS could be in, NASA said in a statement. Besides that, Voyager 1 seems to be operating normally. NASA reports that it is gathering the scientific data it was designed to and is in contact with the engineering team, and the spacecraft hasn't gone into safe mode because of the AACS problem, in which most instruments are turned off and just the most crucial life support systems are prioritized. So, the group is moving on while attempting to figure out what's going on. Suzanne Dodd, project manager for Voyager 1 and 2 at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said in a statement, a puzzle like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission. Both spaceships have been in operation for approximately 45 years, which is much longer than mission designers had anticipated. Also, we're in interstellar space, a high radiation region where no spacecraft has ever flown. A software update may be the solution, or the crew of Voyager 1 could just get used to it. The crews of the Voyager are used to constantly shifting their routines in order to adapt to new situations. The nuclear batteries that power Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are steadily degrading. Therefore, the spacecraft's power is decreasing with time. Multiple spacecraft systems have been disabled. However, the science instruments have remained operational. Theorists' models of the interaction between the heliosphere and the interstellar environment are becoming more complicated now that they have access to real field data from the Voyagers. According to Gary Zank, an astronomer at the University of Alabama in Huntsville, the sort of broad image is that our sun exited from a hot, ionized region and entered a patchy, partly ionized sector in the galaxy. The hot region probably developed after a supernova, in which an ancient star or stars nearby exploded at the end of their lives, releasing immense amounts of energy and heating the surrounding area so much that electrons were stripped from the atoms. The rim of that area can be compared as a beach, complete with crashing waves and churning tides. When we enter such a chaotic region, magnetic fields get entangled and even reversed. In general, the observed turbulence is not like the smooth magnetic fields that theorists prefer to sketch. Albeit, the precise degree of turbulence depends on the method of observation. Little change in the field is seen at broad scales in the Voyager data, but there are considerable oscillations around the heliopause due to the heliosphere's effects on the interstellar medium. It is expected that the spacecraft will emerge from the turbulent shoals and encounter the pure interstellar magnetic field at some time. Or maybe you have the wrong idea. Some scientists still think the Voyagers are within the heliosphere, 
According to Len A. Fisk, a space plasma scientist at the University of Michigan and former NASA administrator, there's no reason for the magnetic fields in the heliosphere and the interstellar medium to have exactly the same orientation. Years ago, Fisk and George Glockler, a colleague at Michigan and a veteran Voyager mission scientist, began working on a model of the heliosphere that extended its edge by an additional 40 astronomical units. The Voyager's travels will continue even if their voices are utterly silenced. Voyager 1 will reach Proxima Centauri in 16,700 years, while Voyager 2 will do so 3,600 years later. After that, they'll keep going around and around the galaxy for millions of years. Intact or not, they'll continue floating around for a long time after our sun has died and the heliosphere has disintegrated, long after even our little pale blue dot has vanished. Perhaps they will be able to send a farewell message before they depart. It won't be broadcast over the airwaves, and even if it's heard, the listeners won't be human. The message is carried on another kind of vintage technology. Two records, not your standard plastic version though. These have a copper core with a gold plating and an aluminum casing for protection. The so-called golden records include information about the home planet of the Voyagers in the form of photographs and audio recordings. There are 90 minutes of music, including Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 2 and Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good, and images of children, dolphins, dancers, and sunsets. And there is a message from Jimmy Carter, who was the U.S. president when the Voyagers were launched. We cast this message into the cosmos, it reads in part. We hope someday, having solved the problems we face, to join a community of galactic civilizations. This record represents our hope and our determination and our goodwill in a vast and awesome universe. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about these astonishing discoveries made by Voyager 1? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here, which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.